So the first settlers um, came to Wapaka in 1849 and they were five men from Vermont and had heard about um, the falls in the area in Wapaka and they came looking for that. So Wapaka's history is very grounded in the water. Uh, the Wapaka River was what first brought the um, original settlers and the Menominee Indians who lived here at the time and had lived here for 10,000 years before that um, loved this area and settled this area because of not only Wapaka River but also the Chain of Lakes area. Um, they had camps out on the chain on Otter and Taylor Lakes and they would go between those throughout the, the warmer months. Um, those initial settlers that came, they came for the river because um, they wanted to set up mills and so those initial settlers settled right kind of where the Danes Hall is today and um, set up camp and then Wapaka grew from there along the river. Um, another interesting fact about Wapaka is that at one time it was the potato capital of the world. Um, so in 1871 the railroad came to Wapaka and in 1872 the very first shipment of potatoes went out of Wapaka. Um, a local farmer saw that they could use the railroad to their advantage um, to move those potatoes out of Wapaka and um, it became a huge um, profit for that farmer and then also for many farmers in Wapaka. Um, by the late 1800s and the early 1900s, Wapaka was known as the potato capital of the world and they set the potato prices here in Wapaka. Um, and that continued till uh, the early 1900s and then with um, the Depression and World War I, that kind of fell off and dairy farming took over. Um, there's still potato farmers here in Wapaka, but it is not as, um, as big of an industry as it used to be. The Chain of Lakes, um, initially settled by the Menominee Indians, um, lived here for nearly 10,000 years until those first white settlers came to Wapaka in 1849. And um, they would travel between the Chain and then the Wapaka River here. And um, a lot of the roads we have today, um, and a lot of the initial roads that the, those settlers used were um, Indian trails. And um, once the settlers came, they hadn't really moved out to the Chain of Lakes area. Menominee Indians stayed in the area for a number of years until um, many of them were moved to reservations or just moved out of the community. Uh, but by the late 1800s, the Chain of Lakes became known as a tourist attraction or a tourist stop. And um, when the railroad came in 1871, it was the perfect time to start advertising the Chain of Lakes. And uh, people could easily get to Wapaka from Chicago, taking a train. And um, by the late 1800s, when the Wapaka trolley was set up, there was a trolley line that went right out to um, the Grand View Hotel, which would have been the furthest stop. Um, there was also a stop at the Wisconsin Veterans Home. So the Veterans Home itself, too, did help bring uh, more people to the area as well. And then, um, yeah, those small cottages started popping up, and then the tourist industry took off. And um, even today, still, we have a lot of um, visitors and also part-time residents from the Illinois area because a lot of that initial advertising for the community was um, in Chicago. So since 1953, the Wapaka Historical Society has existed and their mission is to preserve and to collect the history of Wapaka and then also the Chain of Lakes area. And we do that by not only offering free programs, but we also have been collecting Wapaka history since the beginning. Our first building that we purchased, um, we ended up moving the Hutchison House Museum to South Park. And that was originally located on, East, uh, on West Bolton Street. And we moved that to South Park and it's been a museum ever since. And then in 2001, we purchased the Holly History and Genealogy Center, which was the former Wapaka Library. And we've been here um, at the Holly Center then since then and um, offer exhibits and programs and a meeting room um, and a research facility here at the Holly Center. So uh, the Wapaka Historical Society not only collects that history, but we also want to educate the public about that history. Um, and we do that through school tours and the programs and um, just having daily appointments. Um, so we do a lot of work with the community to not only research local history, but also family history as well.